Hi, I'm Wayne Hilliard. I uh, thought I'd do a series of instructional videos on the use of uh, an auto collimator and reference mirror to check uh, straightness and flatness. Uh, straightness of a straight edge and flatness of a surface plate. Uh, I recently acquired a auto collimator and there seems to be a real lack of uh, information. Fair amount online in PDFs and in Google books, uh, technical books, metrology books. Uh, but on YouTube, almost nothing other than some promotional videos put out by companies that are selling calibration services. And even then, they don't really show a, a visual auto collimator, which is what I own which are sort of, I meant probably, I won't say obsolete, but not real common anymore because there's auto, there's automatic types of auto collimators and uh, as well as, as electronic levels. And that's what, if you go to a, have a calibration pro come in and have them calibrate your, your surface plate, uh, if it's a big one, they're probably going to use an electronic levels, diff do differential leveling on the surface plate. And, uh, you know, obviously this, equi this equipment is uh, way beyond what any uh, private individual doing machining, serious machining in his own home, would want to spend money on. Uh, I recently bought a uh, surface plate, which I'll show. I'll show you the surface plate, I'll show you the straight edge that I'm looking at right now, I'll show you the auto collimator, the mirrors that go along with it, and the uh, Try to give you some uh, a clue on what how, uh, what an auto collimator is, what it's used for, how it's used. Uh, if you should maybe consider getting one, uh, or should you just hire somebody to look at your surface plate and tell you what it is. Uh, my first little bit of my background, I've uh, started tool making apprenticeship in 1978. And uh, I've been a tool maker, die maker, and injection molding ever since. So I have almost 40 years in plastics industry uh, doing precision machining, uh, inspection, a lot of surface plate work, a lot of gauge block work, a lot of indicator work. Uh, that whole time, I've never really understood what an all collimator was. Now, a few years ago, I always, well, start over, all my entire life I've always been interested in astronomy. And uh, a few years ago, I think 2002, I went over to a uh, convention, the Stella Fane Telescope Makers Convention in Springfield, Vermont, which is about an hour and a quarter from my house, and uh, got hooked on uh, making telescopes, grinding the optics. And so I, I, I developed an interest in optics, and the auto collimator is an optical device. So I finally, my two interests merged, precision machining, optics work. I finally was able to learn, understand what an auto collimator was, how they work, why they work, and what you can do with it. And so I've spent the last few months, since I bought my surface plate, I didn't really want to pay somebody to come in and calibrate it. I really wanted to do the inspection myself. I wanted some way of qualifying uh, the numbers, put a quantity on them. And so uh, I decided I'd shop on eBay and I scored a uh, auto collimator. So I think what I'll do right now is I'm going to uh, switch, get the camera off the tripod, bring it over, show you the, the different things here, a couple, three, four items. And uh, and then uh, take it from there. Uh, right now, I'm set up to inspect a straight edge. Uh, I'm going to have some video shot through the eyepiece of the auto collimator. It won't be as good as looking into it with your own eye, but you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about. And uh, I'll, uh, between that and also, I'm going to show you how you interpret the readings from the auto collimator. So hopefully I'll be able to piece this all together and make it informative and interesting and uh, I won't get too many flames 
in my uh, in my comments in the video. So, anyways, so I'm going to grab the camera. I'm going to start showing you what uh, what well, all this stuff is. Okay, so here we go. So let's start out with the surface plate. The surface plate is by Ron, which was the one of the original surface plate companies in the United States. They were bought by Truestone, and then Truestone was bought by Sterrett. Uh, as usual, corporations swallowing up other companies and stuff. It's a 24-inch by 18-inch surface plate. Uh, has a groove milled up, a uh, dovetail groove milled up the center line, uh, which I'll uh, have mixed emotions about. Hindsight being 2020, I probably wouldn't have bought this surface plate with that slot in there, but hindsight's 2020, and it might turn out to be handy on occasion. I'm sure it will be for securing uh, work pieces down for inspection. And they also have a couple of uh, half inch 13 threaded uh, inserts in the plate too for clamping. So that's my. Uh, that's my surface plate. I don't have any idea how old it is. It's, it's fairly old. Uh, it's been around a while. Been in a warehouse in Springfield, Vermont for probably 10 years since it was bought in a buyout. Okay, this here is a 24 inch cast iron straight edge, which I've made. This is made out of uh, 24 inches of uh, Durabar G2 gray cast iron uh, milled side panels relieved for weight reduction it is roughly one inch a little over one inch wide about three and a half inches deep by 24 inches long I milled it then I surface ground it on a uh, surface grinder got the all four sides ground ground the two working edges which are as this edge and this edge um, on, on the surface grinder let it spark out got it good and straight and uh, this first video is going to really be about inspecting this for straightness. Uh, that's one of the primary uh, basic things that you have to do is establish a straight edge. It's used, I, I actually did this because I'm currently, just as a little sidetrack, I'm rebuilding a little bench shaper. And I wanted a straight edge to use on the uh, ways to spot in with bluing and do some hand scraping. So I made this uh, straight edge. I've been letting it age. I plan on scraping it in at some point, getting it flatter than what it is. But it's not too bad right now. It's certainly usable as is. And uh, it's going to be fairly involved doing an analysis on this straight edge. And I'll show you a couple, few, uh, three different ways that you can uh, assess the straight edge. Say, tell how straight it is. Now, first of all, I want to point out that this straight edge is... Uh, well, before I go into that, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me finish the instrumentation. So this is the auto collimator. And uh, I plan on uh, doing a, a more in-depth explanation. I will probably get some a PDF or two open on my laptop and feed that into a movie so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Otherwise, I'll just be babbling about collimators and auto collimation and... Uh, plane waves and how this whole thing works. But suffice it to say, what this thing does is it, 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 it takes a light source, projects it through a, uh, through a reticle, it comes out a constant flat beam of light, which means essentially it's coming from infinity. I then have this object here, which is a, uh, let me get down closer, see if you can see that. So I'm going to focus. It's a reference mirror. It has to be flat, pretty good mirror. This is eighth wave, flat to an eighth of a wave, which probably a lot of you people don't understand what that is. Just let me say it's very, very flat. If you take green light, it's about 547 nanometers, the wavelength. That means there's 507 nanometers, which is billionths of a meter between the light waves. Take one eighth of that. And that's how flat this surface is. So it's pretty flat. It's flat to within tens of nanometers. Uh, this reflects it back. And this is the auto part of the collimation. The light coming out is collimated. Now you're auto collimating, which is bouncing it back into itself. The light re-enters the instrument, comes through, and it goes through. And you have a reticle back here with moving crosshairs. There's a micrometer adjustment 
and you can you can move this back and forth and I'll show you in the video through the eyepiece it'll make more sense once I get that show that so I won't go into a great deal suffice it to say what this does is this allows you to measure the angular deflection of this mirror in this case we're looking at angular deflection this way it allows you to measure that and this is then this is calibrated to a half arc second so that's one half arc second of angle which again it probably be easier to show on paper uh, what exactly that means um, it's it's pretty small though pretty small um, number and then you have to translate that into a, a linear offset that this thing actually uh, has moved over its bay over its length so this basically functions on uh, on trigonometry is what you're doing some basic trigonometry to figure out small distances and it's somewhere on the order of some tens of millions of an inch that I've seen deviation here and again you'll see more of that once I get the uh, laptop up and running and recording so you can see the numbers I'm talking about so anyways let me see anything else I want to cover here in this introductory part I don't think so I think what I'll do now is go into the actual um, I think I'll, first thing I'll do is I'll explain. I'll go on, go and get on my laptop and uh, explain, show you exactly what I'm talking about here, so you can have some conceptual understanding. Then I'll come back and actually set this stuff up and inspect the edges of the straight edge. Um, I'll show you <clears throat> one way of assessing a straight edge which is because this design of the straight edge has these two parallel faces or they, they in theory they're parallel this is called self-checking so you can look check one side flip it over if it's perfectly parallel and straight then they should read the same both sides uh, and if they're not then you'll get a deviation that's one way to to uh to check it now what you can do is actually is uh again i'm getting ahead of myself Let's not get ahead of this subject. Let's go look at the design and operation of an auto collimator in theory. And then when I, and then when, when I get back to discussing this stuff, hopefully it'll make more sense. See you in a bit. Bye. Okay, so here we are. This is the schematic diagram of an auto collimator. Uh, now, so as I said, you have a light source here. This is it's similar to what I have downstairs the only difference in my basement the only difference is where the light source and the eyepiece is in my in mine the eyepiece is down here the light source is up here doesn't matter functions the same way so let's just use this example light light from the uh, you have light coming from a bulb goes through a condenser lens which makes, basically condenses it down to a focal point at that focal point you have the reticle that I met that I mentioned which for now just imagine it to be uh, crosshairs as in a, a rifle scope the light expands from that focal point this focal point here is the focal point of these condensers it's also the focal point of these of this of these of this objective so what that means is is because this is at the focal point of the objective it goes through here now this is a beam splitter and what this does is it it splits the beam in half it's a 50 percent beam splitter so what happens is the light coming out from this reticle comes here hits this beam splitter 50 percent of the light goes dumped off to this side here and wasted you don't see that the rest of it goes through the beam splitter expands up till it hits the objective and then it it comes out collimated this is known as collimated no matter how, if you were shining us at the wall, and you would have a uh, uh, a lit image of the reticle on the wall, the diameter of the objective, and no matter how far you moved it away or towards the wall, that would stay a constant diameter. This is what is meant by collimated. This light goes out, hits a reference mirror, which you don't see here. Well, let's just assume there is a planar mirror here of suitable quality. The light is reflected back through the objective, is focused back down, goes through this beam splitter. Now this time, 
50% of the light goes up into here and is wasted, which is okay, that's tossed away. The other 50% of the return light gets reflected back up to this, to your eyepiece here. And you have, as I said, a matching reticle here. If this plane wave, if this planar mirror is absolutely perpendicular to the optical axis of this co uh, collimator, then this reticle and this reticle will line up exactly. And now I think I want to switch PDFs and show the... Uh, let me see, is this going to show what I want? Yeah, I guess so. Let me zoom up here a little bit. 150%. Move over and up. So, as you can see, here's your light coming from the auto collimator. The light goes out, hits this reference mirror, and it's bounced back. Now, if this happens to be, as I said, perpendicular, the light goes directly back. But it's not going to be, hardly ever going to be. So what you do is you, you, you set, you align the optics up on this first position of the mirror, which is your datum plane. Then as you move the mirror along the straight edge, it's on a sled with the particular spacing between feet. Now in my reference mirror, that's a two inch spacing. So there's two inches between this, these, these feet here. So as you're tipping, you're changing the return path of the light. Now, let me go back and see. I thought this had what I wanted to show. I guess it doesn't. Long story short, <laughs> let me get back to my, yeah, here we go. Long story short, you're measuring the angular displacement of reference mirror in relation to here. And, and as you tip this mirror back and forth, the reflected light, the, the reflected image of the reticle moves back and forth in the eyepiece. And again, I'll have video showing what that, what I mean by that. It'll be easier to understand when I show the video of the eyepiece. Uh, and see the, the actual reticles that I'm talking about. Um, you can measure that. That's measured in, in, in uh, arc seconds. And then by doing the appropriate trigonometry, simple trig, right? Angle trig. You've got a hypotenuse two inches long, got an angular displacement. You can take the sine of that, and that's your distance, that's your displacement that, the, that this foot has moved in relation to this point here. So let's see how this turns out. Okay, so this is the video where I'm going to show the measuring of the straight edge uh, with my auto collimator, reference mirror, straight edge that I made, and a aluminum reference scale so I can step off two inch steps. The, this reference mirror has two inch separation of the feet. So any angular displacement will show up uh, in the auto collimator. And I'm also figured out how to video the auto collimator and hopefully get some decent video so you can see the, the actual through the eyepiece view as I'm moving, move, moving the sled. So with that, so let me start the, uh, the other camera rolling. And uh, I'll start it running. There, just a second. Let me get back here. Make sure that's there. Okay, let's start this. Okay, I guess it's running. So here's my here's my zero here. So let's move the sled two inches, like so. And if we look at the Article. I am now going to adjust the micrometer to adjust the broad single line in between the two double lines, like so. That's about 10 arc seconds. So let's do another one. Here's another 2 inch increment. And let's see here. That needs to be moved a little bit more. That's about 15 arc seconds. Let's move 
another two inches. And I think I can actually move it back a little bit, like so. And uh, just two inches more. I'm not going to do the whole, the whole rail at this point. So to give you an idea of the amount of displacement that this has, I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to move the radical back to zero, and then slide the, the rail back up like so. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this thing off 60, one minute of angle. So there's one minute. There's two minutes of angle. Or, yeah, two minutes of arc, two arc minutes of angle. So I'm going to go back, center it on zero. There's my reference point there. There. So that is a brief demonstration of the, uh, the reference sled on a collimator and doing a slide. Uh, I'm going to stop the camera now. I'm going to grab my paper, show you some measurements that I've done, and show you how you convert these measurements into um, into linear dimensions. So let me stop this camera, and I'll stop the one that's recording the uh, auto collimator. Turn off the auto collimator. Okay, so here I am. Here's results of a test I did on the straight edge. Uh, here's a zero, zero is that's the origin, that's the datum plane, set the datum plane. This is eight arc seconds, 7.5 arc seconds, so on and so forth. Now this, this shows, just, just this alone, without converting the distances, can show you that there's something going on there. And you see how, how it, how it, how it, uh, the numbers change and then finally here right around the center of the bar they start going they go negative which means they're going back the other way um, basically this bar has a belly in it that looks like this so let's convert these numbers these arc seconds to a linear distance so I have stored in this calculator, I have the amount that is uh, that arc, what decimal part of a degree an arc second is, and I'll just show you basically that calculation would just be one, and then there's 3,600 arc seconds in a degree. You divide that, and you get a point zero 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 two seven seven eight uh, for a number. So that is the decimal part there now. So there are eight arc seconds. So that total angularity is 0.002, two thousandths of a degree. Okay, so now we need to get a linear distance. So you basically, you just take the sine of that, which gives you, uh, well, 3.879 to the negative fifth exponent uh, which is now that is a distance and that is 38 millionths of an inch that that two inch uh, bar that that my reference mirror when that when it tipped onto that angle the foot raised or lowered depending on which way it was going uh, 38 well, I'll say 39 millionths of an inch so basically you do this across this whole process um, oh I forgot eh, important part you also have to multiply it by two inches because it is a two inch it is a two inch um, distance See, that that number was for one inch unit circle is one inch we're on a two inch unit circle well it's not you know, two unit circle two inches so it's 7.758 um, rounding up million millionths of an inch over so that went 77 millionths of an inch so basically you now know how much that leg moved and anytime that the angle is anything other than zero that means that that thing is still tipped and 
that leg has just gone that much further down. So you run a cumulative total. So you have your, your initial one, then you do a conversion, add, do a conversion, add, do a conversion, add it. And then as you get down here, you see right here, the cumulative error here is, uh, well, this number, take my word for it, I, I didn't do the exponents, but I know what it is. This is actually a little over three ten thousandths of an inch, or uh, 334 millionths of an inch cumulative error. Then, because these angles go back the other way, um, you start subtracting the numbers. And as you can see, it comes up and closes pretty nicely here. Uh, so that's that's the basic process that you do with an auto collimator. And uh, yeah, it's, it's straightforward. And uh, I think I'm going to edit this up now and post it. And if you have any questions, comments, please. Uh, Please put them in the comments and below the video, and uh, I'll answer any questions you have, or, or if you need any clarifications, or can think of something I could have shown better than what I did, let me know. Anyways, thanks again for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye.